This week on Americana Outdoors, we're in West Texas with Ray Hanana and Steve Snell as they gear up for what's promising to be a winter whirlwind of a quail hunting experience. We're down here hunting blue quail. I've hunted them once before. Those birds have just given me the slip. They're an infuriating little bird. They'll run on you. They don't sit like normal quail or like bobs. The blue quail, as we call them, are really an orphan stepchild in the bird dog hunting world because they, they don't behave like bobs. And too many people are disappointed and frustrated because they think that they can lollygag around and walk up there and those blues are gonna be there. That ain't blue quail. They are a species that prefers to run as opposed to a bobwhite or what most people think of when you're quail hunting is, is a covey species that sits tight, holds well for dogs. Generally not the case for blue quail. They prefer to run and they, they'll uh, give a dog and a hunter fits out here. They're a very challenging kind of game bird and, and those of us that I call blues brothers, we respect them for what they are and we enjoy hunting them. I kind of say like native birds, when you're hunting native birds, they've been here forever, you're on their turf. Uh, so they've kind of got the advantage. As Ray Han will say, with any kind of bird hunt, the most important thing is to drop the tailgate, drop the dogs, and start walking. Ray Han and Steve are not too far along into their first day of quail hunting here in West Texas, but already these birds are living up to their challenging reputation. Jack, whoa! We got eyes on that other dog. All the dogs up here, down. Whoa! Come on up, Ray Han. Yeah. Whoa! Whoa. There, there they go. go. There they go. All right, there could be some in here. Right. Jack! right up through there. You see that dog on the right? He's not backing. Nice shot. Ah! Watch him down. Did you see which way he went down? Yeah. I want to say he went down right in here, but in that clearing. I didn't get a real good look at him. Hey, come here. What do you think? Yeah, this stuff will just swallow a bird up. Yeah, yeah, they're hard to find if you don't stone cold kill them. Native birds. Yeah, they're tough. My buddy has this theory that it's like, if within the first, you know, 30 yards of a hunt, you, you, know, you stone a pheasant, Yeah. it's gonna be a horrible hunt for the rest of the time. So I figure we're starting kind of on the opposite end of it. So it's gonna be a great hunt. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I agree with that. I have heard that theory. We'll see how it goes. Come on, Jack. Ray Han and Steve are wasting no time continuing forward as the dogs have swiftly picked up on the scent of a new covey of quail. He kind of looks like he's staring. There he is. Nice shot. Thank you. Bird down. We got two down. Where's the second bird? I got one got bird one right on this here. Side, one on this side. Moose! Dad in here. They both look like they were stoned. I had marked this one right here. I don't yeah, know where yours the other is right here. Is. Moose! If you see him, grab it. Yeah. Moose! All right, I got one over here. I got one right here. Here he is. <laughs> Steve, nice shot. Hey, thank you. So that's is a native bird of Texas. It's a scaled quail known as a cotton top, live out here. This is my first one ever. Just a beautiful bird. One of the six species of quail in the United States. You know, great, I mean, 15 minutes into the hunt here. I can't believe this happened. I, for the past year, I've been trying to get back after these birds. I had a, a really tough hunt on them last year, and so here we are. Oh, man. This is the thing I find incredible about quail. It's like any one of the species, when you look at them, it's like, they can blend in so well oh, to their... Look at that, I mean, the coloring matches perfectly from that side. Well, see, we got lucky on both of those. Both of those birds were dead before they hit the ground, you know? And with blues, if you don't hammer them, um, you know, they're, they're, they'll escape. I gotta shake your hand, that's the... Is that your first blue? That's my first blue. Well, I mean, first blue that I've got in hand, I should say. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So we're out here in the middle of nowhere, Texas, and this is one of the great things about this 200i unit. The I stands for inReach. And uh, I promised my buddy I'd tell him if I got a quail down, 
We got it down so I was able to send a message directly from the unit, directly from the 200i, and uh, you know, so he knows that you know, it just went through. So he's going to be back in Kansas City being pretty green right now with envy. Walk right through. Got it. Oh, fetch it up. That's dead bird right over there. Jack, here. Come here, son. Here. Oh, boy. Oh, come on. Bring it to me. Oh, that's close. Let's find this one. I got him up here. Look at that. This is blue quail number two. I can't believe it. You know, pretty little bird, understated little bird. And calls this place its home. I mean, I just can't get over it. I've been thinking about this for a year. I'm, you know, I, I missed a couple last year and they've just been eating away at me. And so for it to just come together like this, it's pretty incredible. That bird brings this afternoon of hunting blue quail in Texas to a close. In one of the most dramatic weather shifts we've seen, tomorrow's forecast calls for a winter storm blowing through, with the possibility of three to eight inches of snow blanketing the ground. When we return, we'll see what this new development means for our hunters, and whether or not the team will have a newfound advantage, or if these native birds will continue to live up to the challenge. Apparently we're gonna be quail hunting in the snow in Texas, which I didn't think was possible. But here we are, uh, I was joking with Steve where I can't tell if we're in Texas, North Dakota, or Minnesota at this point, but I'm actually really excited to see how blue quail, you know, they're known for running. I'm interested to see if that changes it at all with this snow, if they hold a little bit tighter, if they act more like bobs where they're, you know, they keep in their covey a bit and hold. I'm hoping that's the case. That'll give us kind of the advantage out here, but to be determined, so long as my hands don't freeze. Now, before setting off into this winter flurry, Ray Han and Steve are taking safety precautions and running through the pairing of their Alpha 200i devices. All right, so you go into dog list, and then you gotta select the people tab here. Yep. Hey, Till. All right, and we're going to pair. All right, so you need to select add on yours. Yep, hang on. Pair handheld. Handheld has been added as a contact. And then for me to do yours, I'm going to pair. Yeah, I hit add. You got it. We're good to go. So now he can track me and I can track him. So that way, if we get separated for any reason, it shows up and we'll be able to track one another. Whoa, whoa. Good shot, Rayon. Thank you. I think that was a team effort. Wow. Fetch it up! <laughs> so, I didn't, everyone was sitting in the snow, it was going to be horrible. Here we are, we're in the birds already. I uh, saw them running, so the theory of them holding real tight uh, maybe isn't as good, but gosh, I don't know, I mean, that dog was down for probably five minutes holding those birds, so hopefully more things to come here. Due to the intensity of the snowfall, recovering this downed bird becomes near impossible. The guys decide it's a good time to follow their Garmin GPS units back to the trucks and wait out the storm until it passes. The worst of the winter storm has passed and left behind a thick layer of snow canvassing the ground, disturbed only by shoe prints and paw prints abound. Using a waypoint on the Alpha 200i, the team was able to locate Ray Han's bird once the snow had settled. Joining us for the latter half of our hunt is wildlife biologist Jesse Wood. We're hunting in West Texas. This is uh, in the Permian Basin in a transition area uh, where it transitions from the Edwards Plateau into the Trans-Pecos regions of Texas. It's just a unique area. As I mentioned, it's a transition zone. So you have a, a change or a transition in plant and wildlife species, kind of a unique area. 
We have both mule deer and whitetail deer. We also have scaled quail and a few bobwhite quail, not a lot. But it's just a unique area. It's, a, it's arid, like much of West Texas is, but it's just a fun area to hunt. Woo! Burn! Woo. Good shot! Thank you. Bird down. On it. Dead! That away. I don't think he's getting away. Nice find wow, there. Nice find. Thank okay. you, Steve. There you go. Nice. Appreciate it. I know this is entirely, there's probably no way to answer this, but it's like, what do you think average size covey is in this part of the world? It's not uncommon to, to run into coveys that are 25 to 30 birds. Um, now that's gonna be in a, in a really good year. And you may even run into some coveys. I've seen as many as 50 in a covey. Uh, but typically it's probably gonna be, you know, a good solid covey is gonna be around 20 birds. All right, see if we can find some bird dogs. Moose is out there cruising right now. Steve's pointer, Jack, is retrieving a blue quail downed moments ago. What you got there? Juvenile. Male or female? Male. Yep, that's All a male. Right. That's a male. If you hold it up next to the other one, you can really tell. Oh, man. Didn't get skunked. Did not get skunked, thank <laughs> goodness. Nice shot. The first one was just a warning shot. That's you know. always important. That's a female. See how subtle that is though? I was about to say, okay. So. Very subtle, see that? Wow. You have to have them, I mean, not I always. Say, I was about to say, so you're talking about just a little brown streaks. Just a little right brown there, streaks, that's it. That's it. Wow, because so, I, when I picked it up, I was like, it's gotta be male. Yeah, and that one's been around a little while, at least a year. Yeah. What is this, what are we doing here? He's tucked in tight, there he is. Nice. Wow. Boy, that's what I'm talking that about. That was here. about as perfect as it gets. Good boy, here. Yeah, so today I had a great time, got to hunt with Ray Han and also Steve. And we put a good long walk in, made a big loop for blue quail. We're able to get into a couple of coveys, had some pretty good dog work. And of course, as blue quail usually do, we had more give us a slip than not. So great hunt, enjoyed the dog work, and, and of course enjoyed the company. To be honest with y'all, I wasn't planning to come to Texas and hunt in the snow, but here we are, soaked to the bone right now. But hey, I kind of like it. I'm from, you know, Midwest. I kind of got excited because I always say it's like quail hunting gets good when the first snow hits. And so maybe the locals don't like it, but I'm a fan of it. While our Texas blue quail hunt comes to an end, Ray Han has a few more closing statements on how Garmin pays attention to their customers and develops products essential to delivering positive user experiences to the avid outdoorsman. I always say there's two types of technology in the outdoors. There's technology that hampers an outdoor experience and technology that enhances an outdoor experience. When you look at something like the Alpha 200i, that's something that's gonna completely enhance an outdoor experience. And all for positive, you know, in between keeping track of our dogs, keeping track of where we are, you know, being able to reach out to people, mapping everything. It's all right here in this little 3.5 inch screen. So, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that.